Thank you all for coming. I always knew my brother was a popular guy. And it is so pleasing to see so many of you here. It makes me ask, how many people did Donnie not know? As you all know, there was a lot to love about my brother. At times like this, our saving grace is that the good people in our lives leave good things to the world. They leave good things behind like love. It's what makes us miss them. It's what makes them a blessing. I know there'll be a lot of shedding of tears today, and that is fine. That is allowed, but only on one condition. I want to hear some laughter too, because Donnie loved to laugh. If you were living in the east side, doing whatever, and Donnie laughed at the same time, here in Liberty City, you would hear it. That's who Donnie was. I didn't see so much of Donnie when I was growing up. There was a 16 year age gap between us. And by the time I started school, Donnie was graduating from college, living his own life. But it made me value the times he did come around. I remember how excited I used to get whenever the doorbell rang. And I always knew it was him. He just had this way of ringing mom's doorbell like no one else could. My big brother was coming around. I remember when I was in the eighth grade, he drove me to school once in his brand new Chevrolet, even though our school was only a 10 minute walk away. I remember him taking me to my first football game. Our beloved Dolphins had trashed the New York Jets. Yes. I remember him giving me my first taste of beer when I was 15. I remember him taking me to my first nightclub. I remember him calming me down once because I came home so angry and upset because Sharon Lawrence told me she didn't want to go out with me. I remember him laughing his head off once because some guy at the gas station thought I was his son because of the resemblance we shared. I remember feeling good about that. I remember how proud he was of our Dolphin team when they bended the knee last season. I remember how angry I got when the 45th president called all those boys sons of bitches. How I couldn't stop throwing the remote at the TV. And when 45 called those rednecks from Charlottesville fine people, it took mom, my little brother Sean, and mostly Donnie to stop me from throwing the TV from out the window. But you know, I got a question for him. For 45. A few, actually. Was my brother a son of a bitch as well for applauding those players who bent the knee? Was that racist ass cop who shot my brother three times in the head a fine person? Even though my brother never held a gun in his life, never owned one, actually. You probably wouldn't believe me anyhow, would you, 45? Fake news, right? 
Is that how it is now, 45? Is that how it's going to be for every black male from 16 to 35? Tell me, is that how it is now, 45? Who exactly are you making America great again for? Me? Donnie? I hate you just as much as you hate me. So should I call you a son of a bitch now? I am sure we can all recall the moments where Donnie was more to us than a son, a brother, a father, an uncle, a fiance, a cousin, husband, friend. My brother was all those things and more. Much, much more. No. Donnie wouldn't want me to. Donnie wouldn't want me to go low. Donnie would want me to go high. Like he would want me to right now. Like he would want you to. Like he would want everybody else to go high. Save your anger, kid. There's more than enough out there already. There are plenty of other ways to fight. Donnie would always say that to me. He was always right. I'm gonna do what he says. I'm not gonna go low anymore. I'm gonna go high. And I'm gonna be there for him. When the Dolphins smashed the New York Jets, I'm gonna be there for him. When the Dolphins bend the knee when the anthem plays, I'm gonna be there for him. When I bend the knee, I'm going to be there for him. For Donnie. My brother. My captain. My king. Thank you.